Yacht A. My name is Shoshana Bigay, and I work for Title VI Indian Education as a teacher. I am Navajo. My clan is Twitajitni Ashli Asheng Bashishchi. I am the Bitterwater clan, born for the Salt clan. I would like to share a story about the Navajo Four Seasons and why we tell stories in the winter. Long before the Caucasian people introduced the calendar to the Navajos, the Navajos used the sun to tell time and the moon and stars to forecast weather conditions. The Navajos considered the position of the moon, sun, stars, and wind and air to determine the kind of weather to expect. Birds, small animals, and the galaxies also were studied to forecast seasons. In the beginning, the first people, meaning the first Navajos, were the first to consider dividing the years into different seasons. They decided that the seasons would start with spring, when there would be growing things. Next would be summer, when the growing things would grow. Fall would be the harvest time, when the growing things would get old. When the growing things would be finished, this indicated that winter has come. After the winter, lightning would be responsible to wake everyone because he was given a place in spring and summer. These are the Navajo traditional teachings that I have learned, and I still try to carry on these traditions. I will pass these down to my girls, and I hope that they're able to teach these teachings to the next generation. A day, spring, dawn, spring to the Navajo means the renewal of life. Plants begin to turn green with spring flowers and the end of frost. Watermelon seeds and cantaloupe seeds are planted in the dirt under the stove in the Hogan. When they sprout, they are transported in the field with the corn. Last year in spring, me and some of our Title VI families planted gardens in the spring and had great success. I love how they all carried on this indigenous tradition. Summer. She. Summer is the time Navajo families begin to move to summer sheep camps to get better grazing areas for their livestock. Family members go out to the cornfields to hoe weeds and mend fences. My grandma Daisy had a sheep camp. She had over 100 sheep. My dad and aunt would tell me stories of when they were young, of their adventures sheep herding with my grandma. They would pack their lunches and follow the sheep throughout the Chuska Mountains in New Mexico. Also, every summer when I was young, my family would go down to Tehachi, New Mexico to shear my grandma's sheep. I have many great memories of my family shearing together. Fall. Fall is for harvesting, drying fruits, and corn grinding. Corn stalks are tied to small bundles and stored so corn can be used later to feed horses and sheep. During this season, families stock up on firewood for the cold days in the winter. Even in modern days, many Navajo people have to stock up on firewood for their stove. Every fall, my husband's parents go and chop wood to stay warm in the winter months. Every autumn, my mom dries fruit she dries apples, pears, and strawberries. They are so yummy. She even makes jam from fruits. My favorite is her strawberry jam. Last year, my daughters learned how to make Navajo kneel down bread, which was made from corn from their grandma's garden. Winter. Hi. Winter is when all summer animals go underground to hibernate like bears and reptiles and winter animals are seen. Sheep and horses have grown thicker coats to protect them from the cold weather. This is a time when adults and elders tell stories to the children because they are indoors more. From the first frost in October, 
we can talk about certain stories all the way until the first thunder in the spring, which is usually in mid-February to mid-March. It is a time for reverence. Many stories are shared about animals, which were told to honor our animal relatives. There are also stories about constellations and much more. Many winter games are played at this time, such as Navajo string game, stick games, and even shoe games. This is a great night to share a long time tradition of stories passed down from generation to generation. Alexander. Today, we are going to explain to you the cradle board. Mother Earth, now Sashma, Father Sky, Yadishkirshe, Rainbow, not feel that thinking ball in ears, a jaw, lightning, that silkish sunbeam, shepherd on, and little rainbow, not feel that the quarter roots. Yo 
Cradleboard, soft brain tan buckskin sewn with sinew, adorned with floral designs of seed beads in varied colors, individually painstakingly sewn into intricate patterns, distinguishes the tribal lineage of newborn baby, curved shade made of supple limbs of tamarisk bush, cleaned and braided together to protect eyes from the rays of the sun. Little brown arms and legs swaddle securely within leather straps, enveloped, embraced by natural gifts from Mother Earth, sacred plants and four-legged brothers and sisters, protecting and preparing infant warrior for life's many battles. Cradleboard created with blessing songs, prayers, and a ceremony celebrating new life. From within this safe cocoon, introduction to sacred elements follow. Fire, wind, water, land, sky, and brothers and sisters of all shapes and sizes teach. Observing and becoming aware of the universe baby learns. He is one part of this world. What he does has a bearing upon those around him. From within the confines of this cradle board, he learns patience, endurance, discipline, and the power of one. Hello everyone, my name is Annalisa Allison and I'm a teacher in the Nebo Title VI program. Today I have the opportunity to read you a Goshu Indian legend. This book was written and illustrated by the teachers and students at Ibapa Elementary. This book is called Pia Toya. Pia Toya a Goshu Indian legend. In the time before the people, the land we know as Ibapa Valley was a large mountain region. The coyote lived there on one lonely mountain. Mother Hawk nested in a treetop high on that mountain too. Early one morning, Mother Hawk flew to the ground. She held her breakfast in her claws, a small gray mouth. Coyote knew of Mother Hawk's breakfast. He had seen her capture it. Coyote was hungry too. So he sneaked up behind Mother Hawk. As he came close, he thought of a plan to make Mother Hawk's breakfast his own. Mother Hawk, Coyote said, you are so mighty and powerful. Look through the trees. Do you see a fat rabbit hopping there? He would make a fine breakfast for you. 
Mother Hawk looked up from the mouth for just one moment. Quick as lightning, Coyote snatched it from her. Give back the breakfast you have stolen from me, Mother Hawk said. Her voice seemed to shake the air with its power. And what will you do if I do not, said Coyote. Before she could answer, Coyote swallowed the mouth in one quick gulp. Mother Hawk became angry. She pounded her wings and flew into the sky. She watched Coyote and then, without warning, swooped down on him. Coyote saw Mother Hawk coming. He saw her sharp claws. With a yip, 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 he jumped out of the way, just escaping Mother Hawk's talons. Earth and rocks scattered everywhere. Mother Hawk was still angry. That trickster coyote has eaten her breakfast. Up into the air, she flew again. And once more, she plummeted towards him. Coyote jumped out of the way once again. Mother Hawk let out a screech of rage. Coyote knew he was in trouble. Mother Hawk was mighty. She was powerful. And she was trying to catch him. A third time, Mother Hawk flew into the air. She was furious. With all the power she could gather, Mother Hawk circled in the air again. She plunged down at Coyote one last time. The dust of a thousand storms whirled in the air as Mother Hawk attacked. Boulders crashed down the mountain. Trees swayed in the mighty windstorm Mother Hawk's wings caused. Coyote ran here and there always staying out of Mother Hawk's claws. At last, Mother Hawk was no longer angry. As she landed in a tall tree to rest, the dust storm began to settle. And from that rose a mountain greater than the rest. It was called Pia Toya. The skyward peaks, scarred and jagged, bore the marks of Mother Hawk's claws. The cuts she made into the mountain started creeks and springs to trickle and flow with water. Coyote had seen Mother Hawk's anger. He had seen her strength and power and he felt ashamed. Coyote disappeared in the trees with his tail tucked between his legs. At last, the sun began to set, coloring the sky crimson. Mother Hawk flew high into the air. Below her, the new Deep Creek Range proved her power and might. Isn't this such a great story? I just love all of the illustrations and colors. I hope you will be able to share this story with your family and friends. I have left a link on our website to access this story again whenever you'd like. In order to access our website, you are going to go to indianeducation.nebo.edu. And on the home page, I've created a story that says Pia Toya. And you're going to go down to the second link where it says click here to read this story to your friends and family. And you can access the story whenever you'd like. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo,
Hi, I'm Julie Cruz. I am one of the co-chairmen of our parent committee this year. I serve with my husband, Larry Cruz, um, and our family is Wallapai. Hi, I'm Natalie Billy. I work with NEBO Title VI Indian Education. Um, I'm the liaison between the parent committee and uh, Title VI staff. So I take care of um, just a lot of the stuff that the parent committee does, which is a lot of stuff that um, interacts with most of what we do here at Title VI. Um, the parent committee regalia making started back in 2002, uh, where the parent committee made actually 40 uh, Navajo traditional outfits for the 2002 Olympic Games. Um, they were able to go up and participate in the um, Discover Navajo uh, stuff that they did for the Olympics. And so that was a big jump into uh, getting started in making different regalia and different outfits for uh, our Title VI. After the outfits were made for the Olympic Games, parents started asking questions about special clothing for graduation and other ceremonies for their children. A lot of families didn't have resources to purchase them or anybody who could help make them. So they started asking questions of the parents and the leaders in parent committee and in Nebo Title VI. From here, it led into making powwow regalia. A lot of the Title VI and parent committee leaders were involved in the powwows and they wanted to help include their children in that. This is one of the first outfits that I made for one of my sons. This was his, his hoop dance outfit. And we learned to make their outfits and their hoops that year so that he could perform. Um, I don't have my very first outfit because my kids like wore those out. But um, most recently I made an outfit for my daughter who went through our program here at Title VI and then continued on at UVU and Cultural Envoy. And this was her, the outfit that I made for her. So these are her leggings. Um, and just so you know, this is my child that her, her nickname is Shaw. So uh, in Navajo, that means bear. So all of her stuff since she's, since I started making it has had sort of a bear theme and also a star theme because um, her middle name is Star. But her outfit, includes a vest with the same logo as on the, the um, leggings. And then her outfit, this is a jingle. And so this is her uh, most recent outfit. And it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> We've helped with fancy outfits. This is my daughter's fancy from her shawl and her vest. And her leggings as well. And then um, my, uh, my son began uh, what's boys fancy dance. And uh, so we did make, we did make bustles for one of our ooh, one of our projects that we did. So these are um, my son's bustles. And then I made um, I made his outfit to go with it. So he's got his um, the rest of his outfit. And then this came with learning to make also spinners. So we, we learned a lot in that, um, in that little workshop that we did. And we've also made grass outfits that are similar to the fancy outfits minus the bustle and spinners, as well as um, outfits for special dances like a basket, the basket dance and the sash belt dance and some of those dances that we've made outfits for our children as well as they perform. From Powell Regalia, we branched into the accessories that go with it. So we've been beading, 
This is one of my beading projects I worked on. My children are, are wallopi. And I've beaded hair ties and, and different things too, but this is a barrette that holds Shakota's feather for her uh, jingle dance that I beaded. We've made breastplates. This was a breastplate for my little boy. And we've done leather work. We've made belts for our jingle dancers and fancy dancer girls. And then we've made, I've done the bells and things also for my boys that, to wear while they dance. We've also made other accessories for our kids um, that go along not so much with their outfits, but with um, their instruments or their, like my boys have hoops and we made a hoop bag and they have made drums in their, um, like in Camp Eagle and they've done flutes in Camp Eagle and we've done bags for them to carry their drums and their flutes so that they don't get damaged. Another thing that um, the parent committee helps with is um, service learning projects that we do with the kids throughout the year. We have made blankets um, like quilts that we've donated to adopt a native elder and also um, we have done blankets for um, we had a family who uh, suffered a, a loss and so we made some blankets for their kids. And then um, we've had the opportunity a couple of years ago to do a tree for the Festival of the Trees where we made ornaments um, with native, native themed ornaments um, that we used on that tree. And then um, we put it up at the Festival of the Trees for it to be donated for Primary Children's Hospital. We also, when we were making ornaments for the tree, we got a lot of feedback on, from people who wanted ornaments to purchase of their own. So the following year, we put a group of us together and made ornaments that then we were able to sell at our Native American market here in Springville. And the money that that went for, the, the supplies for the ornaments was donated but then the money that came from that, we were able to turn around and put into our scholarship fund. Um, as, as of to date, we have offered about 50 scholarships through the parent committee to graduating seniors. And um, some years we have, we've been able to offer one or two, and I think at the most we were able to offer four one year, just from fundraising that our parent committee does. Um, other things we do to help raise funds um, are like at our powwows, we, we make the fry bread and, and tacos for people to buy. And we even branched out and once we've made mutton stew as well. Um, another thing that, just to, to let you know a little more about parent committee, our parents are extremely involved and they love to jump in and help our kids. Um, at after school labs and at different times when the kids have been struggling and needed help, our parents have stepped up and offered to help with things like tutoring. Um, I know one year at our um, award ceremony, end of school year award ceremony, three or four kids said thank you to me to help for helping them with their math. So that's just another thing that we do to try to help these kids stay focused on their goal of graduating and moving on. Um, and then at the end of their hard work in, grad in high school and elementary and junior high, we have been making graduation stoles for our seniors. And we present them with the stoles for their graduation so that they can graduate um, and let people know that they are native and that they have a great support system behind them. And another thing that we did this year that was kind of uh, different, not on our normal thing is we were asked to make some um, masks for different uh, groups so that they could give them out. Um, so we've made, how many did you guys make that day? We've done 75. 75 was our original. And I know that my kids worked on them at home and we sent about 100 just from my family down to the Navajo reservation. Uh, Julie's family sent a bunch, do you know how many? I don't. We a bunch to the Walpi reservation. And, and so we've just been making masks and um, sending them to where they were needed as well as to the Urban Indian Center in Salt Lake to help with kids starting school so they could start with some masks. 
So that's just a little bit about um, parent, parent committee and our regalia class. We meet every Thursday here at Larson Elementary from 10 to 2.30. If you want to come and help out, you're more than welcome to. We're starting this week on this year's stoles. So come and help make stoles for our graduating seniors. A shout out to learn. our staff. <laughs> We've got over 30 seniors graduating from our school district this year. So just a shout out to that, um, to our staff for helping with that, but and to our families for helping and a plead for people to come in and help. We've got a lot of stoles to make. Thank you. Four, three, two, one. Hi, my name is Alita Cruz, and I dance to learn more about my heritage. Yeah, it's a, I'm Paulito Allison, and I like to dance to stay connected to my culture. Hello, I am from the Near Water Clan, born for the Edgewater people. My maternal grandparents are from the Folded Arms people. My paternal grandparents are from the Towering House people. My name is Eileen Quintana and I dance for my community, my family, and myself. Hello, my name is Jericho Billy. I like to dance. I dance for my people to make others happy. So my name's Ailee and I'm Lakota from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe and my clan is Mini Koju and um, I think I really enjoy dancing because I feel like it helps me heal mentally and it really just um, gets my mind off things and I think it really, it really expresses like who I am I guess, I don't know, but yeah. Yate Shakota Star Billy and she Billy Ghana Nisle Tobaha Bashin Billy Ghana Dashi Ashihe Dajanale D Tashke Spanish Fork Dinasha Yeah. Hello, I'm Shakota Star Billy. I'm the 2020 Dream Starter. Um, the reason I dance is because I want our ancestor stories to live on through me.